Welcome again. This has been a tough week. I'll be honest with you. Gotta get my glasses on. It's been a very, very tough week. I got a call, a text from uh, from Pastor uh, Blaine Divine. You gonna get that, did you? You got it, did you? <laughs> you got it, did you? <laughs> because he always called me Brad Banks. <laughs> you got to get these names straight. I got. I get them right. I got a. <laughs> I got a uh, Mick Mac Mark. Friends, <laughs> say that one real quick. Mick Mac Mark <laughs> and Brad. <laughs> we got a lot of good friends here. We made friends, and it's. it's I'm so blessed. But he asked me would I speak today, and I felt very, very privileged, and thank you all for letting me, allowing me to do this. I felt very honored and blessed, and thank you. Brad, Joel always sat right where you're sitting. And I always told Joel when I started speaking, lock the door, don't let them out. Because <laughs> you, you got to watch them. They, they, sometimes they'll run out on me. <laughs> Okay, I love to laugh. I do. I'm sorry. We, we need some laughter and joy right now. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this privilege to be able to speak your word. I pray you give me the words. Give me the peace, the calmness. I pray that we all can use these words to help us, and hopefully they do. Lord, we love you so much and all you do for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm going to start off with Psalms 35 at 16. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted. He's near to us. And save those who are in crushed spirit. This passage reassures us that we are not alone in our sufferings. And we all have suffered. It shows God's compassion and comfort. It shows a source of strength and solace during such hard times. I'll be honest with you all. I was preparing a message Wednesday. I started early in the week. And uh, me and Jody, she said, are you hungry? I said, yeah. I said, let's go. She said, let's go get us something to eat. I said, okay. We went to this real nice place in the Jackson Trail. Boy, they got them good old biscuits. <laughs> Boy, them things are good. But we was in line to get them, and I have never seen a lack of law officers in cars in my life. Foo, foo, foo. They were headed. I said, something ain't good. Something ain't good. And Jody, bless her heart, she's, we got a grandchild that goes to West Jackson. And she said, I hope it ain't a school. She said she just felt it. Unbeknownst, when we got home, it was on the news that's what it was. It was a school. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I was sitting there, and I knew when I was putting my message together, I just felt it from my heart. I needed to change direction. I needed to change the direction of where I was going. This is one, been, this is one of the hardest ones that I've studied and researched and tried to put together in tough. But I hope it gives us some peace in a terrible, terrible act. We experienced this awful, horrific act last Wednesday. And it ended with the tragic of four losing their life, nine critically, severely injured, and severely, severely marking people for the rest of their life right here at home in our backyard. Those poor kids, 
now should be one of the safest places they could go. It's become, I'm sorry to say, would it a norm to have shootings? Now they do stuff like that that have to fret for one. Because I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine it. But we live in a world that can have pain, sickness, suffering, storms, disease, and terrible, horrific acts against people. There is no one who is not affected by the harsh realities of life. No one. We're not exempt. Some things, sometimes I think, I wonder, I don't know if I'm out there by myself. Y'all let me know. Why do bad things happen? And why do bad things happen to good people? Did you know in my studies, that is one of the most asked questions in theological, is why do uh, bad things happen to good people? And it's so, so, so tough. It's a difficult question, but I felt I need to speak on it. God is sovereign, and we believe all things are from God. So when bad acts happen as humans, I wonder, I can't have that. I'm sorry. I said, why? Am I by myself? I said, why? I'm sorry. God gives us our option or free will to choose. We have that. Some choose evil. Answered by the enemy, the devil. God loves all. God does not directly cause bad things to happen or happen to good people. He just does not do it. Keep that in mind. I read to you from John 16, 33. And you will have troubles in this world. But it tells us to take courage through a sometimes we may toil in the shadow of difficulty. You may have peace. God says, I have overcome the world. Amen. Many scriptures tells us of suffering as well as hope. Isaiah 43, 2. Promises. Promises. That God will be with us. God will be with us. In Psalm 34, 19. God assures us deliverance. He's going to take care of us. He's going to deliver us from that evil. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 4 reveals ministries, opportunity for us as we comfort others due to the consolation we have found in God. You understand that? We may go through something. He comforts us. And then he wants us to comfort other people as he did us. Sometimes suffering occurs due to the decision, decision to sin by others or ourselves. It's simply a decision. Maybe it's not simple, but it's a decision they have made. I'll tell you about some in the Bible. Consider Paul, a religious man who persecuted Christians. What happened to Paul? Paul met Jesus on Damascus. Then Paul was turned around. And Paul wrote several letters that went into the New Testament that contributed to 13 books of the New Testament. Look at this disciple. We all know him. Judas. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 coins. What did he do? In his life in guilt. These are not good things that's happened. These are choices that these people have made. They made. Look at Adam and Eve. 
the choice they made. These things were choices that have changed our lives. God has made something out of it, and he has changed our lives with it. Many people in the Bible faced difficulties. God used their pain to reveal his glory, charging us with the courage for our own journey. I'm going to tell you about one. Job. Everybody knows about Job. Job was a man who did right in the eyes of God, but he suffered greatly. He describes him as upright and blameless and who feared the Lord and refused evil. Still, he encountered bad in the case that caused the rest, of, rest with the devil. In Job's story, Satan played a major part, the enemy, the devil. He gave permission from God to shift Job. Fear and loss might cause Job to curse God. Job's animals were killed or stolen. He lost his wealth. His children died. He was devastated. Job tore his robe off, shaved his head. However, and responded in many ways of us that might struggle amid such suffering. Could you not imagine Job was ready to throw this, this thing? Uh-uh. This can't be happening to me. No. But he praised the Lord and refused to sin. But then Satan, Satan struck Job a second time. This righteous man broke out in sores from head to toe. He sat in tremendous pain. His wife encouraged him to curse God. Job, no, ain't going to happen. He refused. Denying sin its power, he endured the suffering, clinging to God, clinging to God. As the life storms continued, friends became to Job's side. Through their unwise counsel and encouragement, they implied that Job had sinned, hmm? resulting in the suffering. Job had sinned, so he's going to make him suffer. No, no. But Job, his words about the Almighty proved accurate. In the end, Job trusted his father, and God remained faithful. Just as he assures us, he will be in our situations. The Lord blessed Job's life twice as much as the early years, twice as much. He acquired thousands of animals, fathered 10 more children, and while the devastation of such loss will often remain with us, Job's life testifies beautifully that truly God is with us. Truly. Now, I'm going to a tough place. Very, very tough for me. January the 4th, 1974, had a boy born. He was my nephew, but he was like mine. If you've seen me, you've seen him. He loved everything about me, and I loved him dearly, dearly. He was, he was not my blood son, but he was just like my son. No more. We had a very, very good relationship. Me and Jody was at Home Depot or somewhere. I can't home at Lowe's or somewhere. We was remodeling a house, two houses. And I walked up to pay something at the cash register. I said, ooh, I said, man, I don't know what just happened. I thought I was going to pass out. I thought I was going out. I said, something went wrong. I do not know. When I got home, I was in my den. I lost Billy in a tragic automobile accident. 
August the 17th, 1986. I lost him in a bad automobile accident. I was devastated. Bad. I had another son. I got him. Still got him. October of 2019, we're sitting at home, and we get a phone call. Carrie has fell off of an ax a ladder in California. Massive head injuries, and it ain't good. And it ain't good. These are terrible, terrible things happening. I was devastated. I'm sitting on the back, in the back, squalling, praying. God, I can't do this again. I cannot do this again, God. I can't. But I want to tell you this. I lost Billy August the 17th, 1986. I lost an angel. September the 10th, 1986, God gave me another angel, Maggie Banks. She was born. Carrie, we prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed, and that was during COVID, and Carrie is doing fine now. Amen. He has some struggles, but, you know, he's still doing good. God saved him. We worship an awful God. We must acknowledge that we are human beings who cannot expect to fully understand God's purposes and ways. We're just merely humans. We cannot, we, we cannot do it. God can take anything that happens to us, even bad things, and use it to shape us and make us into better, more Christ-like people if we let him. We're going to make that choice to let him. I'm going to read this to you. Many people dismiss the idea that bad things happen to us because of poor decisions and not according to his will. We must take responsibility. Sometimes we don't know why God allows bad things to happen to us. Even then, however, God can use them to teach us and make us into better people. Disappointments and tragedies can teach us to turn in trust to God for the hope and comfort we need. These experiences can also teach us patience and make us more sensitive to others who are suffering. Hard times can cause us to draw nearer to God, demonstrating that Christ lives in us even in the midst of our difficulties. Inconvenience, trials, and suffering. These experiences also help develop the right attitude for Christian growth. Many people have said that they walked through deep pain. They felt God close to them after that than even before. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. Our Lord will not allow the enemy to destroy us. Therefore, we must continue to trust God and resist the devil, resist the devil, even when we are weary. Some of those words were written by Reverend Billy Graham. Very good words. I know it is hard what we faced. Don't give up hope. We know where our hope is. Jesus Christ. These families need us, support them, support this community with the love of Jesus Christ. 
we need to spread that love. That's our job. We need to do that. Let us pray. Father, we come to you needing this comfort. You come to us to give us the will and the guidance to help these people like we need to. We know things bad has happened. We don't understand why, but we know you will come out. You will win. Lord, you will overcome. You said you would. You will overcome. You did overcome death. You did. And you will help us. And we pray that you will with these families and this community and that school and all schools around that these kids can feel safe and this world feel safe. With you, it is possible. Lord, we love you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.